guys. Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Robertson's Belly Acres. Welcome. <laughs> so we're back at uh, Johnny and Donna's house and we're doing what today? Today is shed build day. Woohoo! Although we have this great little uh, platform here. I'm like, it's a great little, what is it, dance um, floor. Dance floor slash stage. Yes. But Johnny decided he really needs a shed. So. Said he'd rather have a shed than a dance floor. I don't get it, but you know, <laughs> I guess he's paying the bill, so we're gonna do what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> so let's look and see what kind of shed we've got to build today. Okay, so today we're working on a High Point Arrow brand High Point series shed. It's gonna be 10 foot by 8 foot. So, kind of roughly what it's supposed to look like. Let's see if we can get close to making ours look like that. Okay, so. After first getting in here, most important bag in the whole box. This is going to have the instruction manual and all the nuts and bolts and hinges and rollers and sealing tape, it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and get this all unboxed and laid out so we kind of know what we've got where. And we'll go from there. Okay, so we noticed taking the box off the pallet that we had a little hole that they had taped up. I couldn't tell any damage from there. But as we got inside, we found a couple little dings in some of the sheets of tin. Uh, get in here, I'm not exactly sure what parts these are, but you can see right there, they've got it pretty good. And that's two pieces that are pretty heavily damaged. We went ahead and unboxing. They have really See where the forklift got into it and they shipped it anyway so we're gonna have to get in there dad's gonna make the phone call and talk to them and see what they're gonna do to make this right because at this point we've unboxed it but we can always box it back up bad part is it has they have to order another one okay so here we are exactly one week later after several phone calls we finally got the the damaged shed replaced we've got it all laid out again so not seeing any damaged parts or pieces we're gonna go ahead and start assembling this bad boy okay so step one of this arrow 8 AR 108 a shed so we have the 89 I think that's upside down, but 8937. And he's overlapped them 11 and 7 eighths inches. And if you look, all of the screw holes line up. Okay. Okay, so when we put these two pieces together, they're going to overlap. A little over 11 inches until your holes line up. The two bolts that are sticking up on the flat edge are going to poke up. The two on the ridge are going to go down. Of course, put nuts on both those. We'll need a pair of, pair of pliers and a drill or a screwdriver to be able to put these together, tighten them up good. So let's tighten this one up here. Screw together, we need a total length of 91 and 1 8, so we're right on the money. Okay, so step one said to, to bolt two pieces together and repeat again for the other two. So we've got two of them, both of them are the, the same length at 91 and 1 8. So we're going to repeat the process with part number 8936. There's two of them. We're going to overlap them using five bolts and nuts to attach these two together. We're overlapping 11 and 7 eighths inches till all five of these holes line up. Like on these, we're gonna go two, two bolts standing up. These three will be going down. Okay, go ahead. The two coming up are on the flat. The three going down are on the ridge. So we'll get these put in there and hand tight and then we come back and tighten everything up with the screw gun. These are part number 8936. They're 
after we got them all screwed together, we've got our five screws in it. Total length should be 119 and 3 eighths. And that's what we measured out at. So we've got that one right. Let's go on and see what the next step is. Okay, so we're gonna take the two frame pieces, number 9367. We're gonna take one of them. We're gonna lay it under the ramp piece, number 8934. We're gonna line up these four screw holes. We're not using bolts this time. We'll be using the provided screws. And we'll put those together on both ends. Slide that under here like so, and slide it in until our screw holes appear, just like this. Now you want to make sure when you're putting this together, right now it's not a big deal, but once we start putting the frame all together, you're going to make sure that these big drain holes are facing the outside of your shed. We get these three pieces together. Our total length is 119 and 3 eighths. Measured out at, so we're good to go there. Rear wall channel 9917. It says to line up the three holes. You gotta keep in mind is there's one bolt hole in the center that both holes are bolt. One is a bolt hole on this side, one screw, one bolt, one screw. So that's the three holes they're talking about. Total length is going to wind up being 118 and an eighth, and that's what we measured out at this time. Okay, the sidewall channel is to, it says to set it aside for step 10, so we put it off the side. That way, we know where it's at, and we'll be able to go pick it up when it comes time to use that piece. These are rear wall angles number 5986. We lined them so that these five holes are all lined up on both sides. Put one bolt in the center. We've got that, total length should equal to 118 and 1 8th. And we're gonna set these aside for step seven. These are sidewall channel 9922. There's four of them, we're gonna overlap them. Three holes, we've got the one bolt hole in the center to attach them. So we're gonna do that to both of these. Push that down in there, line it up. Okay, we've got these tightened up. We're gonna set these aside for step 10. Sidewall angles 8871. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line up the five holes and we're gonna put a bolt through the center. Now these are the two wall channel, or wall angles, 8841. Yeah, do like we have done previously, line up the five holes, put one bolt in, tighten it up. So we've got both of those done, they should total out to 88 seven eighths. Yeah, 88 and seven eighths is the total length. We're gonna lay these aside. Step seven. These are roof beam numbers. 10, 4, 70. We're going to overlap them until these six holes all line up, making sure that the bottom slots line up as well. We're going to go ahead and bolt these together. We're going to do this on these two, and then we've got two more here that are 10, 4, 70s also. We'll get them bolted up. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and put the bolts, two bolts, in these slots. They go nut to the inside. Total length should be 91 and 7 eighths. Okay, now that we've got these bolted together and measured, everything's right, we're gonna set them aside for step 12. Okay, we've got roof beam number 10, 470, and we're gonna overlap two of them to get the, the holes here lined up and the two slots. We're gonna do that with these two and these two, then we're gonna put them back to back to form an I-beam, basically. So we're gonna get these holes lined up, we're gonna put these 10 bolts in, and we'll come down here in the middle and put two bolts in, in the middle of each end of this. Okay, this is the completed roof beam. As you can see, we've got our 10 bolts here, two here, and two here. Finished measurement, 
is 91 and 7 eighths. We're gonna set this aside for step 12. Okay, so we're gonna take part number 6403, which is the painted door track splice. And we're gonna use a door tracks number 9366. And we're gonna lay them inside here, lining up these little holes with that hole. Just like that. Put a couple screws in it. Total length should be 118 and 8 when you get done with it. Okay, so now we're gonna take these door slides, plastic. We're gonna slide all four of them into the track, making sure that the rounded edges go towards the bottom of the track. Slide them up in here. Let those sit and we're gonna put this side a piece aside until step seven. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start putting down our uh, floor frame. We're gonna be using the three floor wall channels that we've already constructed along with the floor panel that has the, the door ramp in it. You gotta make sure that you have your drain holes on your ramp to the outside of your shed. You don't want it to rain and run, run water inside your shed. The other thing we need to look at is the way that our corners are made. You're gonna have the L shape there. You're gonna make sure that that lines up because we're gonna be screwing these together somewhat like this. Okay, okay so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put one screw in the front of each and each screw. That way we can get it all lined up and then once we get everything that four screws in it then we'll go back and we'll square everything up make sure everything's good and squared then we'll go ahead and tighten everything down good and put the rest of our screws in okay we're going to measure this for square uh, the way we're doing this ed is laying it on the top edge on the outside of the corner so we are at 148 and a half now we'll go Check the other corner to corner, diagonally. And again, 148 and a half. That tells us we are square. So what I'm gonna do, since it's a little bit windy, we're gonna take a Sharpie and we're gonna mark on our floor exactly where this is supposed to sit at. That way, if something happens and it does get moved, we can go back and make sure everything's tweaked back within the parameters of our lines. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go back now and we've gotta put uh, another screw in each corner and then in the front two corners, we have to go right down here in the bottom and put a bolt in that. So that way everything's taken care of. That's why we mark the edges. That way when we pick this up to put that screw in the bottom, we know we're going right back in the same spot. Okay, so we're gonna take part number 847033, which is a corner piece. We're gonna lay that right here on the, on the floor. That way we've got a flat surface to work on. We're gonna take front panel 9373, we're gonna lay it on top and line up these holes and we're just gonna put one screw in the top and one screw in the bottom for right now. Later on, we'll come back and we'll put a bolt in the middle. But for right now, we're just gonna screw them. All of the painted pieces that we're putting together now will have these little plastic washers on them. That'll just help us seal it up, make sure that there's no leaks. Keep in mind, these little plastic washers, they come in a little sheet. They're all stuck together, so you gotta tear each one of them off so that you can put them on the screw individually. So once you get that pulled, prop pulled off of the sheet, slide it on your screw and you're ready to rock and roll. The other thing you wanna remember is, like I say, the washers go on all painted pieces, but that's the painted side. So you wanna make sure that you're getting everything put together right. We've got our holes lined up. Stand up one corner, 
all your holes across the bottom should line up with these little bitty holes for the screws to go into. So. have to do this a little bit different than what the book said just because we're dealing with a lot of wind here in Oklahoma today we're gonna go ahead and put the beams on instead of beams you want to put in the wall angles as we're building the wall this has to put all four corners up then put the top beams in unfortunately we can't do that with the, with the wind we're dealing with today okay so we're putting these wall angles on uh, make sure you're getting the right pieces and the right sides if not, it makes for a longer day. And when you're placing these in, you have to take slide it behind there and behind this side. If you don't slide it here, you're not going to be lined up right. So. Okay, and here's where things get a little bit complicated. On these ends, it actually calls for two different numbers on the 10. We're going to use one sheet of the 6515, and we're going to use two of the 7332s. There's 7332, 6515, 7332. It's going to take four screws across the top of each one, four screws across the bottom of each each piece of tin to hold them in place. That's not included. The screws go in the seam. So those will be another four and then we got to have four more nuts and bolts to be able to, to bolt those together too. So here we go. Set these up here. We're going to set them right on the bottom of that, on the top of that bottom floor plant flange. We're going to slide it down until it tucks just behind this corner cap. So that way everything pulls tight and it gives us a nice good seam right there. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this up and we'll show you once we get done how these all tied together. Okay, and on this one, we're going to have to set it in here just like before. But you tuck that, tuck it under the front piece. And we also want to tuck it behind this one. That way all our seams are going the same direction. Everything gets up in there nice and square and tight. So we'll go ahead and screw that one up and we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to come back here and we're going to come to all of our seams and we'll put screws in these to hold all these in place. There'll be a screw on the top and bottom of each seam and there'll be a nut and bolt in the center. That way it holds everything nice and tight all the way across. Every time that there's a new piece of tin, you get to do that again. Get it. Okay. Now the process of elimination, we have two 6515s left that we're going to put in right here. Seal this up and then we'll be moving on to the inside. Okay guys, so here we are back again today. We had to quit last night. We didn't anticipate the number of hours it's going to take to put this up. So darkness got us. So we come back today. We're going to go ahead and put the roof on a couple little quick pointers. I want to point out when we left last night, like I told you, we're dealing with quite a bit of wind. I went ahead and anchored this down, put a couple screws in this to hold it down last night. I've already pulled those out. It's very, very, very important not to anchor your walls to the floor until you have the shed complete because you're going to have to be able to 
lean and push and twist to get everything lined up just right. But you'll see that as we're going along here. Um, we went ahead and put a couple screws in these two sheets beside the, on each side of the door. We're gonna pull those out. That way we can go ahead and get our door trim put on and get right back on schedule with the book. So let's go ahead and get this finished up today. So we're gonna start out with door jam number 9369. This notched side is gonna to go towards the door. We're gonna stand it right in here. Overlap, and then we'll put screws in top and bottom. And it also calls for bolts with nuts and acorn nuts on it. So we're gonna make sure all that's put in there and that'll have this whole side, this piece completely secured down. Okay, so like I was talking, we're gonna have these little screws but it's gonna feed in from the inside. We're gonna put the washer on the outside, then the regular nut, then the acorn nut. But that way, it keeps everything protected. We still have a, a weather tight seal on the outside, is the reason you're putting your washer on the outside. Feed this one in from the inside. We've got the bolt in. We'll put the washer. And we'll put the nut on there. We're gonna snug it up. And once we've got that nut tightened up, we'll put this acorn nut on there. That's super serving dual purpose. It's nicer, plus you don't have to worry about catching your finger against those threads sticking out on that bolt. There it is. And there it is. Okay, now we're gonna go down here. We're gonna skip the middle. We're gonna go down here to this bottom hole and repeat the process. Okay, remember these? These are the wall channels. They don't go on top of the wall like I told you before. These are the ones they said to hold until step 10. Well, guess what? We're at step 10. We're gonna start with the back wall, then we'll do the two side walls, and we'll do the front wall. So let's go ahead and get these screwed into place. So we're ready to put the side channels on, or side beams. Again, we're gonna tuck behind, making sure that we're laying on the top of the back channel. Get it right up there and we'll screw her down. So now we're gonna move on to the front beams. We're gonna put on numbers 9365. These channels will go just like this with the channel to the inside. Okay, now on these little channels, like I said, they're gonna mount in like this, but the end that's got the little hole in it goes on the door side. It's gonna line up with this hole right here. So we're gonna stick it in here and that's gonna line up just like that. After we've got all the channels up, we need to put a screw in each corner in the back. Next pieces we're going to work on or work with are the gables. And you have to make sure that when they ship them, they stack them together. So it looks like one. You can get your fingers in there these apart. The ones we're working with are 8576 and 8577. So we're going to pull these apart and these unlike the, the sides this is pretty sharp metal guys so make sure before we do any other work with these we're going to go ahead and get our, trim, our edge covers and get them put on real quick. These are the edge trim covers there's just four of them no part number with them. So we're going to put them on, it goes on the long side. The way I found to do this is take it, put the corner right inside there, stick it down on. Sure, every time I do this, it pops right on. This time it doesn't want to, there we go. You can just take it, slide it right on there. If you don't do this, you're seriously running a risk of injury. So make sure that you take your time. This is one of those things that you want to do it and do it right. Okay, I need to 
slide it. When you get to the end, make sure you trim off any excess. Excess, not access. Just like that. Just nice trimmed off. And make sure you do all four pieces this way before you move forward with anything else. Okay, now we're going to take our gables and we're going to get our bracket number 6635. We're going to stand these up on here. Always making sure that your flat piece that's bolting to the gable is towards this, the center. They call it the leg. Put that in there and we're just going to bolt it down with two bolts. Okay, so now we're going to start installing the gables. We're going to start on the back wall first. Okay, this end, a pointed end. We're going to slide it underneath that outside angle. And set it right here on the top, like so. And we're going to screw it down. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to use two bolts on the end. The rest of these will all be screws. Once we get done with putting these up, we'll show you the gable brace that we have to put in. Okay. And this last one right here is going to be a bolt. We're going to put this gable brace in. We'll make sure that it goes like this. The instructions tell you to put it in the second hole from the bottom, which this up here is going to be the second hole from the bottom. It's going to be the middle hole on your gable. So we're going to go ahead and bolt that one in place and see what happens next. And that is bracket 9009 for clarification. Okay, we're going to repeat the process in the front, putting both gable ends up, screwing them down. Make sure that we're not putting any screws in the last two holes here because we're going to put some support brackets in there. We're gonna repeat the process and we're gonna make sure that our brace, like I say, is it's facing the same direction as the one in the back. So we're gonna make sure that it is headed towards this side of the shed. This brace is number 9009 and we're only putting one bolt in second hole from the bottom which again like I say that's actually if you're counting holes that's the fourth hole but it's the second hole that's available all the way through all pieces so we're gonna use these uh, door track bracket support brackets we're gonna lay these on long side away from the center of the gable and we're gonna put one on each side we're gonna use two screws to hold these brackets down. And then after we've got the, the four screws installed on two on each side, we're gonna use one bolt and nut to bolt these together. Bracket screwed down with two screws on each one. Now we're gonna put a single bolt right here and running to hold the two together to help support that gable. You might have to kind of pry it around a little bit. We're going to go ahead and seal up these gable ends. They give us this fancy little tape here. If you're like me, you got to have somebody that can see and get their fingernails underneath that to pull it off. We're going to run it like this. Stick it to one side. All the way down to your bracket. It says to cut it. And then we'll fold it over. There we go. There's one. Do that to both sides before you ever even start with your center beam because you won't be able to get back to this point. Okay, and if you accidentally do like I did and cut it a little bit too short, 
You can go ahead and cut another small piece. Maybe. Patch right in there. Dun -da -dun. Sealed up. Okay, so now we're gonna get our, our main beam out. This is the one that's doubled. This is also the one that we set aside in the beginning for step 12. We're gonna position this up in here and then we're going to put two bolts in each end. Take this piece, it goes between these two beams. And split it open here. Slide that in there. Kind of got that in place a little bit, and we'll go down to the other end and get that one slid in. That way we can go up with it and put a bolt on each end. Well, here we go. Okay, so from this, at this point where we've got our beam set in here, you're gonna need two step stools and a helper for this because your top bolt is clear up here. Well, by the time I get it slid up there, I can reach it, but I can't, I'm not tall enough to reach over the beam to hold the metal in to get my bolt through, this, through the beam. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, we've got the center beam up. Now we're gonna move off the side beams. These are number, this one's number 10470. You wanna make sure when you put this beam up, you can see here, you've got a flat side and this is kind of sloped. You wanna make sure that that slope goes to the outside of your shed. That's where your tin's gonna lay. If you keep that positioned the wrong way, your, your metal's not gonna lay right. So we're gonna lay this right up in here like this and we're gonna attach it on both ends with two bolts. These are roof supports number 9204. We're gonna put one bolt in here, bolt it, and then we're gonna rotate this up. I lied to you. Bolt it here, rotate it up, so it slides between the beam, and then we're gonna bolt it right here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this bolt in. And what they're talking about, you can leave this hanging down towards you. And get your bolt nut started before it gets ripped, you tighten it. Go ahead and turn it up here. Tighten that a little bit more. You're gonna take this tab and slide it between your beams. And you're gonna line it up right there. Line it up right here in this hole, just like that. Bolt through that, just like that. And then we'll put the nut on there and tighten them both up. And we will repeat the process in the back. It's now we're ready to start placing the, the roof on. It's very, very important that you follow their diagram on how, on the, on the order to put these on. Because you've got to, they got to go on in a specific order. That way everything lines up the way it should. What we did is we took and started with piece number one, all the way on the left and numbered them sequentially all the way to number 10 on the right. That way we have the diagram. We know we go get the first piece is right over here. Then we just work our way down the line. We just adjust on the building where we're laying it at. Feel free to take a screenshot here. So number one is gonna be the right back of the shed. Number two, left back. Then we'll go to the right front, left front. And we'll just start filling in from there. So we've got our first panel number 8578. We're gonna place it up here. We're gonna put a screw in this top hole in the center. Up here in this outside ridge is gonna go over the over the outside. So we're gonna bring that up. We're gonna line that hole up right there. That's where number one goes.
we've got our screw in hole number one right here. We're gonna carefully reach up here, lift that up, and we're gonna take this protective guard off. Dispose of accordingly. And we're gonna start attaching the gable end through these holes on, the, on our first sheet using bolts and nuts. Make sure that you use the washer on the painted side. Okay, once you get this up here, this is kind of what it's going to look like. If those bolts are coming through at an angle. You'll just put the nuts on them and tighten them down. All our holes are lining up good. So, Okay, so now we've got these bolts all put in the end of the gable. We're going to go ahead and put the screw in number hole number eight going into the roof beam. We are not going to put anything in this one. We're going to get everything secured down. If you like, you can take a screenshot of the diagram that we showed you or just keep it handy so that way you can see what's going on. But we're going to repeat this same process for the next three corners. Okay, so we've got the four corners on now we're going to go ahead and start installing the roof panels make sure you follow the diagram that way all your holes line up so here we go okay so one of the things that's not real clear on when you lay this first full panel up here you can see on this first piece we put that's only half of the rib it's not the, the same size as this she overlaps this one so once we get it up there, this one will be on top. We'll put our bolts in those holes, everything will line up, and then we'll screw these down like the book says. Okay, so the weather stripping, it says you're supposed to cut four two-inch pieces. These are a little bit more than two inches, but that's okay. And then after each panel is installed, we're going to tape the end of the panel at the ridge cap, or at the ridge, that way we can seal that off. So we'll tape this one. We'll put this panel on and we'll tape it again. And we'll do that continually until we get the whole roof on. And these four pieces that we've cut, that I told you to cut off, we're gonna set these aside. You're gonna use these later on the ridge cap. I'm gonna start right there with it. Okay, so what we did is we've got the weather strip tape, making sure we're sticking down at the bottom of each of these channels and we're sticking it down good. That's gonna help us prevent water leakage from getting underneath the tin and leaking inside your shed. Okay, we've got this next panel on. So again, we're gonna tape across the top of it to seal out any moisture. Okay, that one's sealed down, bolted down, and taped. That way we're not, we reduce the risk of any moisture getting into that ridge cap. Okay, one of the things we have to really pay attention to, as you see on this, this piece, is crimped. So you've got that seam right down the center of it. Anytime you have these, you have to over have that has to go under the next sheet so this this piece of tin here is crimped that means we're going to take this this sheet this crimped side goes away from it so we're going to use the non-crimped see there's no crimp mark in this one this one goes on top of the crimped one Okay, and if you haven't noticed, I forgot to mention, we're only attaching at the ridge 
and this center joist. We are not attaching to the outside wall at this time. We also have a bolt, two bolts that go between the joists and the tin to hold the two pieces of tin together. So we're bolting those. But we are not attaching to the outside wall at this time. Welcome back to Shed Build Day 27. Now, today's day three. Uh, we haven't had but just a couple hours every day to work on this. It will take you a full day plus some for two people to put these sheds together, but we're gonna go ahead and get this finished up today. All we've got left is two uh, roof panels, the ridge cap and doors. First thing we're gonna do is put part of the ridge cap on. We're gonna secure it, use part of our tape, a couple pieces of those two inch pieces of tape that we saved, utilize those in this step. We're on step 14 of 16. Here's these two of these little pieces of tape that we cut earlier. We'll cover up these first two bolts. That way we know we've got those sealed off from the elements. Just like that. We're gonna count in to the fifth ridge. It doesn't tell you this in the manual. We're gonna count in here to the next two bolts that are sticking through the roof. We're gonna pull those back out because we're gonna use these to attach our ridge cap. We'll be using the, this first piece of section. We're gonna be using the long ridge cap, part number 8840. We're gonna lay it right up here in place. Do not attach it on this end. The only place we're putting screws in it is gonna be right out here. That around there so everything lines up. There we go. The next step, we're gonna go ahead and put in the last two roof panels. They're both part number 7571, so it doesn't matter which one you get because they're supposed to be marked identical. And we're gonna attach the end panel here. These are the end panels. We've got two bolts that we've got to put in. We'll attach these two sheets to the end panel. And we'll bolt those down and cover them up with those last two pieces of tape that we cut off from before. It's a ridge cap, number 8486. And we're gonna put it right up here like so. We're gonna attach it in the two holes towards the center of the shed at this time. Do not attach it here yet. Okay, now we're gonna come back through and we're gonna attach our roof sheeting to the wall angles on the inside. We're gonna use screws all across here until we get to the spot where the wall angles are overlapped and we're gonna use two bolts. And we'll show you on the inside what we're talking about there. But this is where we're gonna start is with the two bolts. That'll help us get everything situated so hopefully all of our line, holes line up a little bit easier. Okay, and these are, like I said, these are the wall angles and this is the spot where they overlap. We've got holes here and here, it looks like, roughly. We're gonna, we can move that wall back and forth to get everything lined up where it needs to be. So we'll start right here with two bolts and then we'll be able to put the rest of our screws in. Repeat the same process on the adjacent wall. Okay, now we're gonna use these fancy ridge cap ends. We're gonna slide them right here underneath. These bolt, these legs are gonna go, that's what's gonna go around those bolts to be able to secure it in place. So we're gonna start putting our edge trim up. Our short piece is gonna be number 8845. That always goes on the left, whether it doesn't matter which side of the shed you're working on. The left piece is the short one. 8836 is the long piece of trim that goes on the right. So here, the left one, the short one will go on the back, long one to the front, the opposite side, short one to the front, long one to the back. Corner trim pieces, they are marked on the inside also, right and left. When we put it up there, this one's the right. Just gonna roll on up here. One screw through the top, holds these in place. Now we're gonna start putting the door handle and the door handle brace. The brace number is 3719. We're gonna put one bolt through the top of the handle and we're gonna come inside here and we're gonna brace this. We're gonna put it through the brace. Just put it finger tight, don't get it real tight because we're gonna have to be able to move that around. Go ahead and put your bottom bolt in the handle And again, don't tighten it, just 
kind of spin it on there so it'll stay. We're gonna get out the vertical brace number 6278. You're gonna have to have an assistant. I'm gonna line these up and you know screw this in place using three screws going through the front of the door into your brace. Now we're gonna take uh, the top and bottom door braces number 10497 and there's a groove in it. We're gonna slide that right inside on this door, just like that. Line up our holes and we're gonna use one bolt in the center to hold that in place. Same thing. Make sure that you get that tab from the center brace under this. We're going to take the door brace guides and we're going to install them on the bottom of this door. So we're going to come right out here to the outside hole, we're going to place it to the inside, and we're going to bolt that one in place. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like on the inside. You're going to have your upper and lower braces, your center brace, and your door handle brace right here. And this is the front view. You see what it's supposed to look like and how these go on there? Just uh, repeat the process on the next door. Make sure you get all your nuts and bolts tightened up and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we're gonna take, we're starting off with the right door if you're looking from the outside. We're gonna take the, the bottom of the door, we're gonna set it down inside the track like this, and stand it up so that your door is about half open. These little slides right here is what your door is going to attach to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got these slides close to the where our door is going to screw on at. We're going to raise the door up. Kind of sitting right here. And we're going to use these long, these black screws. That's what we're going to wind up using to screw through the door and put in two screws in each side of the door to hold this on. When you're putting these screws in up here, you want to use a regular screwdriver and not a, a screw gun. Just because you're going into plastic and you don't want to strip those out. Okay, so we've got the shed all put together finally. And what I've done to anchor it to our platform, every place there was an empty hole through the frame i just went around i made sure it was square again it was square it was square on our platform and i just put like six or eight bolts in it to help hold it down to the to the platform as you can see there i put two there i mean they're just that's randomly wherever they had holes i did not put any extra holes in the framework that way it's easy to find i did go ahead and make sure that we got our anchors put in here in the door just to reduce the trip hazard okay guys so there you have it we're finally done six months later <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we worked on it for three days but not three full days yeah they weren't three full days we're trying to do this around schedules of doing everything else and running for kids and just craziness anyway this is a longer video than normal but it is a step-by-step -step. so yes. uh, rusty did a, a fantastic job of explaining everything step by step um, these buildings can get really complicated and and a lot of times the uh, instructions are very vague so um, we hope this helps you guys out if you like the video please hit the like button leave a comment Share or subscribe if you haven't already. Yep, share with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that bell button, guys. Get notified of the next video we got coming out. Yep, until next time, God bless. See ya.